Hello students, so this is the first video in a series of many for those of you that cannot be in class each week where I record my lectures or the basic concepts of the lectures on my own time and I will put them up in the online forum for you guys to watch. So if you're seeing this, hopefully you're following along and you'll understand what's happening. So for those of you that were here, uh, for those of you that were in class saw me do this in Microsoft Paint. I'm going to be doing this in Illustrator. And the point of this is all about how our computers wind up talking to us and how we talk to them. So please ignore the giant white screen for right now, but how many people have ever had in this situation where if they remember a math problem like this, where Farmer Joe has a horse he wants to sell, but for that horse he, he wants to get a cow but the person selling cows doesn't want a horse. The person selling cows wants chickens. And the person selling chickens wants seed. The person selling seeds wants hay. The person selling hay wants a horse. So you have to sell the horse for the hay, the hay for the chick, the seed, the seed for the chickens, the chicken for, you know, so on and so forth till eventually you get the cow. That is essentially what is happening with computers. How we interact with them every day in our lives. So I'm just going to draw a rudimentary triangle here. And it doesn't matter if I'm exactly in line. It doesn't have to be a perfectly right angle triangle. And I'm just going to make myself a couple of little segments here. I'm just going to hold the shift key to actually make these lines straight, though. Oh, sorry. My mouse is moving on its own there every now and then. So three, four, and five and six. So up at the very top, up at the very top of this triangle, we have us. We have, once I actually am able to hit the proper font size, we have people. So we have us people and we are right there. And us people, we speak ourselves a human language, right? So we have ourselves what we speak. So we have we have ourselves talking. And right up here, that's what we're doing right now. Though We may be talking English in this video, or we could be speaking Spanish, or we could be speaking German, or whatever. We are speaking a human language. And then at the very bottom of this, we have ourselves the computer. And the computer is made up of stuff. It is made up of, you know, a keyboard, a mouse, a desktop, a monitor, inside that tower is a GPU, a CPU, RAM. It's all made up of hardware. So how exactly do we get from this hardware all the way up to us talking? So that's what this is, all the steps in between how we interact every single day with a computer. So allow me to just open up uh, Google Images here for a moment or Google Chrome. And it'll load. I'm running like four things at once. QuickTime and Illustrator and Google. My RAM is going to be killing me by the end of this video. So let me just type in, I'm just going to type in binary code. And I'll just hit enter. So how many people here have ever seen the matrix? So we've all seen the things of where the code just cascades down. It is in fact a representation of a real thing. That real thing being this right here. This right here is binary code. 01101101. All that means is off and on, on and off, true and false, yes or no. At the end of the day, this computer, all its parts, it runs on electricity. So the, so what it did was they would always run on, let me just type outside of it so I don't accident. So we have, you know, we're running on electrical current. We are learning in binary slash machine languages. All right, I'll put language. That's it. It just understands on and off. At the very base level, that is all a computer understands. It is ones and zeros, yeses and nos, true and false. It is completely binary. 
you ever seen an old World War II computer? Here we go. Let's go with images. This is an old World War II computer. It takes up all this giant room with all these switches and levers and knobs. Really? And all it would it was print out a little tiny piece of paper that would have dots on it. Dot, 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 no dot, no dot, no dot, 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 no dot, 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 dot. And that was a binary language. That is the dawn of time of computers. So while we are still thinking of it this way, while looking at this chart, right over here at the bottom, and yes, I made a star even though I could use a star tool, this is essentially the start, the dawn of computers. And as we go upward, and once again, I know I could be using an actual arrow instead of, you know, just drawing this in the pen. As we going upward, we are going upwards in time as well. So right here, sorry, let me switch tools and then switch back. Right now is the present. Whoop. Come on, scrolly wheel, stop doing that to me. So we've, we're going from World War II, and we basically just have machines that go in binary. But obviously, computers would not be the mass market success they are today if they were still these gigantic things that took up entire rooms. So, what was the next step? Well, the next step was you had to convert those dots, those little tiny ons and offs. You had to convert it into something people understood. So, who here has heard of the Ford Motor Company? If so, you have probably heard someone say of assembly of the assembly line. So we have the assembly language. That was what they did. Whoops, 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 stop, stop scrolling. Stop scrolling. So, they had in themselves an assembly language. We had to take all these little dots and we had to assemble it into something. So if I go back here, there was already another nice, pretty image that was nice and easy here. This guy. So right now, we've got a binary of five bits, because there's one, two, three, four, five spots. And 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 represented A. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 was B. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 is C, so on and so forth. Who here has ever heard of an 8-bit system? Or a 16-bit or 32-bit? Or has anyone actually taken a look at their computer, say it runs Photoshop or any program while it's going version 13 point whatever, and it's going through all that code while it's loading, and it says, you know, 32-bit version, 64-bit version. That's what it's referring to. It's referring to the number of slots we have open here. So this guy right here, this is base 5. This guy right here is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. This is 8. We have 8 slots here. And as you see, with 8 slots, instead of having just capital letters, we also have lowercase symbols and numbers. So we, the more slots you have, the more data you could do. But of course, if we were to just go and simply say uh, assembly language right here, and I'll just Google it once again, we have our machine language right here, our binary language, and we have our assembly language where we have MOV, ECX, comma, EBX, R9D, RDX, RAX. Tell me, how many people off the top of their heads can just know what this means automatically? Not that many. So even though they were converting all these dots and all these little ones and zeros into specific short phrases, a vast majority did not know what it meant. So this was good for scientists and for the computer technicians that actually worked on the machines, but for your average Joe who was using it to just, you know, check their email or whatnot, they would not be able to understand this. So they had to convert that language into something else. That something else is what we know as high-level languages. Now, a high-level language, there are bajillions of high-level languages. You could have HTML, which is websites. You've all seen that. You could have C Sharp. You could have C++. You could have ActionScript. Uh, JavaScript, Java, you know, you can have all plenty of things. Here, I can just literally go to a uh, jdoodle.com here. 
and I will just go and say, oh, look at this. We've got all these different things we can pick from. I have a Python 3 course, so for those of you in my uh, intro to coding, that's what we'll be using. But we've got all these different types of things that we could potentially use no matter what. It doesn't necessarily matter. But this right here is your coding. So if I were to go into, actually, I will go into uh, Python 3 here just to showcase this. So right now, if I zoom in on this, oops, are you not going to zoom in? No, I don't want to leave. Cancel. Okay, fine. I have not set up the short key. Oh, I have set up the short key for that. Mark that as red. So, right now we have x equals 10, y equals 25, z equals x plus y. Well, if x is 10 and y is 25, obviously that would be 35. So it will say print the sum of x plus y, z. So it should theoretically print the sum of x plus y equals 35 way closer to the English language now, right? Here, I can even just delete all that and I can simply say print banana. What do you think it's gonna say? It's going to physically print banana. So, do we understand what the word print means, right? That is much closer to an English language. I told it to print banana, so it printed banana. Nothing else really to go with that. So, much easier to understand. You see how we went from computer bits to electrical current cataloging to basically shorthanding it to making it closer to the English language. But obviously, if, if everyday people were running with this line-by-line -line coding, you would not be using the computer, right? How many people use line-by-line -line coding every day of their lives? Not that many. There is one other step that we went to before we get to us. So I want you to think here for a split second. What is it you interact with every single day on your phone? When you go to the store, what are all the programs called? They're called apps. They are called app, whoops, one moment. Command Z that. Okay, don't command Z that. Let's try that again. Okay, fine. App, look, we have ourselves apps. My, uh, my pyramid has gone away, but that's okay. No, the, just the stroke has gone away. Oh, well. But anyway, there's apps. We have ourselves apps right there. So, here's the visual representation of, of my program. This is not what it actually looks like. In the background, there's a bunch of code happening. If I go back to Google here, and I just go to Google... No, I don't want Gmail. www.google.com, no Gmail. Leave. <laughs> so, this is Google. Nice, pretty, clean. We understand what's happening. This is what we work with every day. If I simply right-click and say, View Page Source, here is the actual code of Google. How many of you would be using Google today if this is what you had to work with every single time you opened up Google? Mm, probably not that many people. So that's basically how it is. If I may just uh, redraw my uh, box here. There we go. Good enough. So that's what's happening. We are literally going from us talking to a visual representation to a high-level language. So we use apps, and those apps are made out of high-level languages, which were converted from assembly, which were converted from binary, which is read off of the components of the computer. Then the computer goes and says, hey, I understand what's happening. Let me go and send this data back through the machine language, through the assembly, through the high-level, through the app, and then we understand it. Essentially, when we are working with a computer, we are having a situation where it's being translated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. We are having a ten-time translation back and forth every single 
millisecond, every single thing we do, every single thing I type, every single time I accidentally hit the scroll wheel, all these sorts of things, it is all just a relation, it is just a relay of information back and forth being converted through multiple different languages, all for everyone to understand. So that both sides of the conversation, the people and the computer, both understand what's happening. So therefore we, you know, don't have the situation of trying to convert English to French to German to Japanese to Swahili to whatever back and forth. It just does that very, very quickly. So thank you very much, and that is the end of this video.